What's up, guys? Time to show off a cool build. Um, I hope you like this. This is a... Um, I have not done this tile before. This is a dial that is uh, produced for like Seiko uh, movements that I adapted to one of my movements. Um, a little bit of work goes into that. I have to cut off and grind all the um, mounting points in the back. Then we have to uh, backside loom it and uh, we use a photoluminescent paper. Uh, it's a little expensive, um, but it's for people who want to like either like uh, laser cut out a sign or print on it and put it on their like establishment for at nighttime so it kind of glows. It's kind of cool. Um, so we cut those out and then we have to cut out the hole for the center, but make sure everything still aligns and find ways to attach it to the dial. Um, that are not visible, which that is the hardest part and takes the longest. So <clears throat> this dial, um, it's not necessarily an expensive dial, but to get it where it is now it takes a lot of time and effort, but I thought it came out pretty awesome. I had just received some blue anodized uh, smooth bezels, and I thought it went with that dial pretty close. Um, I laid out all kinds of blues, and a lot of my blues, this this um, dial almost made them look purple, where like they're too far away. But I was like, you know what? This goes really well together. Did a set of silver hands in there, um, uh, a new set. I think I've done these maybe once or twice before, but I bought them as like a, let's check them out. And now that I know that the company is making good hands that are fitting well and are working well. Um, I've been buying more from them. They're a little little more expensive. You don't get a second hand with it, so i got to deal with all that. But regardless, um, I thought they came out pretty awesome. I did this in a brushed case, uh, just the standard crown, nothing on there. There's you know nothing really to put on there because this you know doesn't quite have a theme other than it's kind of a kind of a classy build. Um, this is on one of my last gilded 2415 movements. So this is a movement just like the 2415 I normally put in there, but this is all done in gold. It was for a watch company for their watches and they sold the remaining 2415s that they didn't use on eBay. And they were in like somewhere in South America and I bought all of them from them. And uh, they, they're not even something you could buy from the company who made them. So, um, I'm going to want to assume they're rare. What's even crazier is I tried to find the company that was making them or that put them in their watches so I could buy their watches and be like, just modify their watches, put my own dials in there. Maybe I'm doing bigger dials. You know, I don't know. Couldn't figure it out who it was. It was wild. Like, I don't know if this was just a specialty project and it wasn't really advertised. I don't know if it's not translating or, you know, maybe they called them their own thing so it's not translate. Um, you know, over to that movement reference, but um, gilded movement in there with a signed rotor, stainless steel movement holder in there, and uh, so I don't know how rare these are. I know I got a good price on them, and I got it for about the same price as I would have normally got my regular movements, though I can't buy those now. Uh, they're just, I don't know if there's a shortage or not being produced, but I cannot just buy a movement. I have to buy a watch and disassemble and throw away all the parts I don't need just for the Two parts that I do need, um, but uh, so could be rare. I don't know. I know. Uh, I know in a sense of things that if um, somebody wanted to buy one, they couldn't unless they bought it from me. I know that. So rare in that sense. Um, and then my buddy Jonathan Gillespie had this really awesome strap. He sent me this with wrist bound. If you're unfamiliar, um, and it went so nice with it you almost have to see it in person because it just came out nice even the wife was like that was a perfect strap for that I was like it, it really was so um that's the overall build uh bezel on this it'll turn left it'll turn right it's held on with a tension ring so like who cares if it moves because there's no numbers on it but just so you know if you're like hey i think that moved it did move and it went on really tight which is good 
but because if it's really loose, it's almost impossible to take it back off and bend the tension ring to where it's going to be a little more tight because there's not really any way to get under it, which you know what that means. When you try to, you're going to mar it or you're going to, you know, dig into your case trying to get under it. So I was happy with the fitment. Um, right off the bat, the, the tension ring that came with it was great. Um, so that's the build. Kind of classy. I don't know if I'm going to call it like a classic blue or a lot of times with these dials that are a little bit more classy, I, I do name them that way. Or like your typical watch face. Um, if it's kind of a classic looking style, I'll, I'll call it that just because I don't want to use like their weird model numbers and then try to remember what these model numbers are for companies I don't really deal with. So, um, but yeah, I hope you like it. I think it came out pretty awesome and show off some of that loom. Um, we'll just amplify it real good with the UV light. <clears throat> So there you go. Um, automatic and mechanical, as you see the rotor here. You can, uh, before you put it on, make sure you wind it just a little bit because if you're not very active and you're not moving this around, it's not going to be kicking. So you don't want to have it like losing time because you're you're sitting idle for a minute. So wind it just a little bit, and how you do it is you back the crown off the threads until you hear it and feel it clicking. At that point, you can wind. And a wind is a turn away from you. I typically go back and forth because it's a lot easier to keep my finger spacing. Whereas this, sometimes I start threading it on. Or, yeah, I do like, which is what I was just doing right there. This, you can kind of get a feel for it and kind of pull, push, you know, as you need to. Make sure you stay in that in that range there. That for four or five seconds mixed with the rotor movement will keep your time throughout the day. But if you do it for something closer to 15 seconds, you're going to max out your 31 hour power reserve on it. That's what I do before I set them for the night and put them down uh, just to make sure that they're keeping time and no issues. Uh, whenever I'm building these and I'm setting these dials on there and I'm setting the hands, I need to make sure that I'm not getting any friction points or anything like that. So. Uh, I usually let them run for a day, make sure they're keeping perfect time. Uh, that means I've set my dial right, I've set my hands right, the, the hands aren't making contact with the dial, to, like I said, to create friction at any point, either where they're going around in a circle or at the base right where the opening is. Um, and that's in particular also with the loom paper because that's also another layer that I've had to add. So we did cut it out a little bit larger to make sure that there would be no contact down there and if you get really at an angle you can kind of see where it's not loomed under there but that's just to make sure that we're not putting any side pressure on the pinions coming up um, so that said pull it out to the one and only click and you can now set your time it's not a hacking movement in it so it's going to keep going you'll also notice you've got a wobble crown this deflects lateral pressure from going into the stem and into the movement, so when you're pushing and prying on it, you're not putting any adverse pressure into the stem, into the movement. And also, it's got a clutch system in there, so once you screwed it back in, if you would have impact to that crown, it doesn't transfer it through your keyless works into your movement. Um, I just had somebody reach out, I guess it's been three weeks ago, that they're deep blue. The guy dropped it, and now the crown doesn't work. I said, did you happen to drop it on the crown? He goes, uh, it appeared as though I dropped it directly onto the crown. So, um, and it just destroyed his keyless works. So it just transferred all that through there. You couldn't wind it. You couldn't do anything with it. So, okay, Google, what time is it? It's 12.38 p.m. 12.38 p.m. You're good. Push it over. Get it out of that time setting. And then wind it down. That is the build. As with every build, you're going to get matching beads. Now, these beads are also loom beads. Now, they don't quite loom as well as that loom paper, but they do loom. So, like, I think, like, the picture that I took together, they are luminescent, and they are loomed up, but they do not, uh, they do not have the same ambience. You know, they look like the f more faded version of, of this but go really well with it. So we'll also come in a blue BVW box. I find I got a couple blues in. 
I was able to use one. This will come with watch cleaner. This is good on all glass and metal parts. So everything here in the center, non-toxic, non-streaking, non-residue, as, as well as a microfiber. And I mentioned before, I'm getting my own again. It's taken a while. Um, I did not like the place that makes them char would charge so much for shipping. And I was like, I get it. You know, you're, you're sending like freaking 20 pounds overseas, but like, I don't know. I was just against it for a minute. So, uh, made a deal. I had somebody else who was buying some. He's like, hey, do you want me to make some? You can come along with my shipping. It's like, hey, there we go. Let's do some. So, microfiber with that. You're also going to get a brown microfiber. This is to be used with your scratch remover. That's for your acrylic glass because you can scratch it, but if you do, use a tiny bit of this, buff it out using your included microfiber that matches and uh, just go against the scratch, filling the scratch, and uh, then buff it out. Um, this is an acrylic glass. It can be scratched, but this will take care of it. If you don't get it out, wait a little bit, do it again, build that scratch up. So filling it, solidifying it, filling it, solidifying it. And then lastly, some uh, leather conditioner to keep your strap perfectly soft. Um, apply it on the front and back, remove any excess a little bit will go a long way that's only if you feel this is not as pliable as normal a lot of times you'll buy a new watch and it will come with a super hard leather use this put it on both sides bend it around you know uh, you know you don't want to really wear that with you know this stuff on it but if you've got like a watch holder or something like that or just I guess sitting it on your desk just in the form that you want it to be that will help a lot to kind of like massage that and work that in and have it kind of take that form. So you've got that in there. You don't use one of these microfibers for this. Use, you know, a rag, washcloth, um, something that you'd use on like boots if you're like leathering boots or something. Um, but yeah, so that's the build. Sorry for the long video. I like going over these a little bit more in depth, especially when it's something new and you haven't seen it before because this is the first time I've done that dial. This is the first time I've done that. Uh, uh, bezel insert I'm sorry it's not an insert that bezel and then uh, it is one of few with that gilded 2415 movement in there so very special watch lots of new things uh, and one special thing so if it's going to you congrats on your watch appreciate you a ton thank you for your support if you want me to build you something custom and unique reach out and I'll see what I can do and if you want to continue to see videos like this like and subscribe because I put them up all the time thanks guys